I have been involved in activism since I was a child. I mean, I grew up in the Black Power movement, Pan African movement of the 70s, and um, my mother was an activist, definitely. And even as a child, I participated in protests against police brutality and slayings of black people in, in, in the black community where I grew up in New York, Brooklyn, New York. So in that case, in, in, that, in, in that way, I have been an activist since I was a child. But as far as my leading or taking the lead or spearheading any type of protest, that didn't happen until I came to Japan, I would say. Um, and I think, and I didn't realize it at first when I initially started, um, when, I initially, when I initially became an activist here in Japan, I wasn't aware of it because actually writing is a form of protest and it's a form of activism. So basically what I was doing with my blog was activism all along, I just wasn't aware of it. <laughs> so yeah, I think I've been an activist in Japan since 2008 when I started my blog, Local in Yokohama, which was designed specifically to address certain issues. When I first came to Japan, I noticed that they performed in blackface here. And, um, but being that I was a foreigner, I didn't really feel like it was my place to try to tell them you know, that you shouldn't be doing this. And I didn't really understand uh, the heart of why they were doing blackface. But little by little, as I, as I lived here, I started to learn about why they do blackface and how, they, how Japanese people approach blackface. And for the most part, they approach it from the position of they're paying homage to black people or they're showing respect for black artists, black musicians, or the ones who are doing it for com comedy purposes. This is a style of Japanese comedy that, you know, uh, uh, impersonation. And part of impersonating someone is putting on the full makeup. Got it. So, um, for years I didn't you know, didn't even consider protesting against it. But then um, in 2015, there was an incident where a very popular blackface uh, group, they performed uh, R&B music with uh, full costumes, tuxedos, white gloves, the whole nine, with blackface. And they're famous for doing it since the, since the 70s, since the 80s, I believe. And they were preparing to perform on a major Japanese network um, in blackface with a J-pop idol group also in blackface who have nothing to do with black music or black uh, black culture or black uh, history, anything. So um, I found this disturbing. I found this troubling and I, and I knew that it was going to be a hot button issue on, in social media once it did take place. So I thought that maybe I should speak up before this goes on air. So I started a, a social media outcry about why they shouldn't do this. I also started a petition. I sent, uh, I sent open letters to Michelle Obama, who was en route to Japan at the time. I sent an open letter to the sponsor of the program that was going to air. Um, and I started a petition in Japanese, targeting Japanese people, because I felt like if Japanese people can't support um, this petition, then maybe I'm wrong-minded about even having a problem about it. But I felt like, I believed that if Japanese people knew that why this was problematic and why it should be, um, it shouldn't air, they would support it. And they did, to the tune of 5,000, almost 5,000 signatures. And as a result, this major network did not air this blackface program. And um, so yeah, it was a successful um, protest, a su successful petition, and but in the end, there was no public discourse about it whatsoever, um, except among foreigners, which is kind of preachers to the choir, or <laughs> choir talking amongst themselves. I mean, if Japanese are not aware of this, then it's just you know it was a. It just it it, it didn't it didn't pay off the way I would like it to have paid off. It was no surprise that it happened again a couple of years later. There was a, a famous Japanese comedian who performed in, in blackface impersonating Eddie Murphy on a major Japanese network. And um, again, 
I spoke out about it was the outcry in social media and but this time it really went global. It got picked up by, you know, BBC and CNN and HuffPost and you know, just by the global media really embraced this one because this was the number one Japanese program of the year where they did this. Um, this this blackface occurred. And um, as a result of this, however, there was public discourse. It was discussed amongst Japanese people, which is most important. Why? You know, Japanese finally realized that this was a problematic practice, and they had to question themselves: Why is this a problematic pra practice? And and why is the uh, international, the global media getting involved in our our internal media? Why are they? Why should they have a, a voice in what we do internally in our media and whatnot? And these are serious questions that need to be asked. You know. I mean, because there have been instances where um, Japanese have 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 criticized um, Western media about their portrayal of Japanese people. So, you know, it's what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's going to be done. It's going to it's going to. You you need to realize that the rest of the world is watching your media in real time, and they're going and they're, they're going to feel entitled to to comment on it. You know, as if you're part of the global community, the global community is going to respond to what you're doing. So you have to really take into consideration that um, all the media that you're putting out is now global media. You really need to take that to heart.